How's it been back together, grafting away? Well, it's taken seven years to make this record. <laughs> yeah. Don't know how productive that is, but uh, we like it. We think it's pretty good. The reviews so far are, you know, pretty good. Excellent. New album, right? Glasgow Eyes, which is a brilliant title. It was a cover, that, a cover idea that he, yeah, he did. He did the album cover, mm -hmm. and the covers got sort of messed, screwed up eyes. All of the ideas had tended to have like somebody's face. The eyes were all scored out and yeah. stuff. And we, I, it was either me or him said Glasgow Eyes, and as soon as it was said, it sounded like an album title, and, and that's that's it. It's good, it's almost provocative at the same time, isn't it? Mm. Glasgow Eyes. But I think it works as a pun as well. Like I, Glasgow yeah. Eyes. It's oh, true. I, I think it was you, Jim, who said years ago, like we, you know, we work together, then we tour together, we want to kill each other, and then we try and kill each other, have a good go at it, oh, and yeah. then start again. I mean, is it a good process working together at the moment? It's, it's an intense thing, but I wouldn't call it enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I think when you've finished it and you've, you've got something and you listen back to it, and it's mixed. That's where the big payoff comes. But yeah. making it, it's like, oh my god, it's there's, there's too much at stake, and yeah. there's too much that can go wrong. And almost with every record we've made, you you, you have the sense that it, you're losing sight of it while you're making it. But it, there's a kind of weird, you know, alchemy. It all seems to come together at the same point, and then you start like it starts to come into focus. There it is, we've done it again, it's an album. I've always wondered who you trust with your first sort of play of music. Is there somebody that you say, have a listen to this, what do you think? My sister Linda probably. Right, yeah. yeah. And how do you play it to her? What, what's the environment when you do that? Uh, well, usually I get drunk in the middle of the night and send her like <laughs> lots of texts. Yeah. Mm. And say, listen to this, listen to this, what's it like? She's a fan of the group, she always tells us what she thinks. Yeah. And there's a new single, isn't it, Jam Cod? JMC. JMCOD. So is yeah. that what I think it is? Jesus and Mary Chain OD. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about Jesus and Mary Chain ODing on themselves. Selves, right. The band breaking up in the 1990s. We OD'd on ourselves. Mm -hmm. What about musically though? Do you, do you feel that you're evolving and getting better? You, you don't really have, you know, like Sid doing it, it's, it's, it's going to be like that. But mm. we did decide that it would be interesting, like, sometimes, no, you just go straight for a guitar yeah. to, f to fill a space in a song or to do a riff. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's something we're probably going to explore mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Still love the guitar, you can still use a guitar, but there's, mm -hmm. there's a world of other stuff there. I, I, don't, I don't think it's possible to plateau because I think the thing that drives you forward is that you can always make a better record. What about the, the evolution of the crowd in front of you? Because I feel like your music's being found by a different generation. Is that encouraging to see? That is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you play a gig and it's it's a bunch of old blokes, mm -hmm. and then sometimes you play and there's there's a lot of like kids there. And that's heartwarming. I mean, I suppose that's that's the good side of the internet. I mean, what it is is we tend to get name checked by younger bands, mm -hmm. and so their fans will then go, "Oh, Mary Chain, who's that?" Mm -hmm. And I, uh, right there, everything about you need to know about the Mary Chain. Yeah. And if that doesn't put you off, then you can come <laughs> along to the show. I've always wondered that about you. Actually, is there been a gig where you had to play for somebody that genuinely made you feel? a bit on edge. You know, I used to love those stories about bands who would see their, their idol or their hero side yeah. the stage or in the crowd. Oh, well, yeah, once we played in Germany and mm. Debbie Harry came to see us oh. and she sat in the balcony right, right in the middle, right in front of me yeah. and, and I had the worst gig in my life because <laughs> I couldn't get over the fact that Debbie Harry was just sitting there and it was, <laughs> it was just so off-putting. Yeah. It was just terrible album. You didn't raise your game for Debbie Harry. I felt Harry. like saying to the tour manager, can I get rid of Debbie Harry? <laughs> I, I cannot stop looking at her and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm so self-conscious. What's the one that you're most proud of? Is there a particular moment in the band that you thought, actually, that's that was a real moment for us? It wasn't even that big a gig, but I remember when we first came in New York, mm. and I remember just playing at the Danceteria in New York. And I remember just thinking, this is amazing, you know what I mean? And then the, the yeah. crowd were going kind of bonkers as well, but it was within three months of us signing off the dole. <laughs> and I remember just thinking, this yeah. is just weird, Could, you know Did your dad I mean? like, not give you 300 quid that he got from his redundant payment to buy some kit? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 we bought a port studio, my dad's 300 quid. I feel like Billy Connolly's mate, he's, he's got this mate called Digi, 
and you tell a story about some mad thing, you think, oh, did you do that, did you? And looking through some of the things you've done, it's, I'd imagine you probably forget, but playing on the Letterman show mm -hmm. and going yeah. to America and doing that stuff. Billy Connolly, we, one time in, in, in the mid-90s, we bumped into Billy Connolly in a Sunset Strip. Mm. And he he just bought this new video camera and he, he literally filmed everything. Uh -huh. And so we were walking down Sunset and Billy Connolly's walking towards us and we walked up and goes, Billy! And I think he thought we were going to mug him. He was going, <laughs> what? Hey, what is it? <laughs> and he was like, said, oh, well, you know, if you've got one, blah, blah, blah. And he's going, oh, what, what's your band? So we're in a band. So did you see me? And she said, oh, I just bought you a record. And I was saying, don't say it, don't say it. And he went, what one? <laughs> Oh, no. And he went, the greatest hits, <laughs> <laughs> which we didn't have at the time. Uh, you know. yeah.